Nigerian streets and establishments are layered with instructions for preventing the spread of COVID-19. And the city of Benin, Edo State, is no exception. But as the pandemic is taking a toll on people's livelihoods, protective gear, such as face masks, is, for many, a luxury. To complement the Nigerian government's response to the pandemic, the International Organization for Migration, IOM, in collaboration with the Genesis Hub Global Initiative, recently trained 60 returnees and local youths in Edo State in the production of face masks. Following the two-week training, participants completed the production of 66,000 reusable face masks on September 30. Joining us to take a look at this is George Galindo, uh, Public Information Officer at the IOM. Thank you very much for joining us on the news. Uh, straight up, how did the collaboration come about and why the choice of a dose state? Well, first of all, thank you very much for, for the invitation. Um, I'd like to start by saying, uh, yeah, of course, we're aware that besides the impact of COVID-19 on public health, there is a great impact also on people's livelihoods, on people's uh, purchasing power. And this uh, disproportionately affects vulnerable people, including Nigerian migrants who have returned to their uh, country of origin to start a new life back home. Um, we must stress that uh, Edo State remains the main uh, uh, place of origin of those uh, Nigerian migrants coming back. So um, the International Organization for Migration conducted an assessment in May that revealed that 90% of over 100 Nigerian uh, returnees consulted in Edo and, and Delta states were worse off financially compared to before the start of the pandemic. In addition to lower income, uh, these beneficiaries' uh, purchasing power had also taken a hit. And uh, three quarters of, of, of the Nigerian respondents reported that food and basic items had become more expensive than, than previously. And this is echoed uh, across West Africa. There's been other assessments in, 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 in several other countries in the region. So it's important to provide uh, vocational training, business skills training, not only for the returnees, but also local youth who are sometimes referred as potential uh, migrants, especially in communities where we see large number of uh, young uh, men and women leaving for greener pastures such as Edo State. Yeah, the, the items are, are being distributed in some local government that you've identified as the main place of origin of over 20,000 Nigerian uh, irregular migrants assisted by the IOM um, with a voluntary return uh, since the early 2017. Uh, has the IOM, uh, IOM kept track of these uh, returnees? Of course, I mean, it's it's very important to to look into the status of these reintegration projects. Um, first of all, to assess the satisfaction of the returnees with, with the project, as well as um, their self-sufficiency. So um, IOM conducts regular uh, visits to, to these locations to see how the returnees' businesses are doing. Um, of course, because of COVID-19, some of these uh, um, uh, uh, monitoring visits had to be conducted virtually, of course, to, to ensure that um, um, uh, that we were not, you know, uh, contributing to the spread of, of the virus. But it's very important to look at, again, the satisfaction and uh, um, the, the sustainability of those reintegration projects. And I think very important to, to, to stress here that for IOM, for, 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 for a uh, conscientious migration management in Nigeria and beyond, it does not mean that successful reintegration will prevent people from migrating. On the contrary, we see sometimes that, that a better economic standing would lead to, to migration. What we're saying here is that if returnees come back, set up a business and succeed, um, they will have a better informed, um, uh, uh, they will make better informed decisions uh, to migrate via the proper channels. Um, just uh, last month in August, actually, the Edo State government claimed to have uh, recorded successes in reducing the rate of illegal migration. 
what is the current state uh, now with illegal migration from data available to you? Well, um, I think the, the, the biggest priority right now is to uh, ensure that those people who have become stranded either in countries of transit or destination can return to their countries of origin if they wish to do so um, immediately. Certainly the movement restrictions and the closure of, of airports uh, worldwide, the um, uh, strengthening of uh, uh, border restrictions uh, around the globe has had an impact on uh, international travel as well as on irregular migration. But our main priority right now, in addition to raising awareness about uh, the ongoing human trafficking and smuggling of migrants, is to ensure that people can return home. Why? Because uh, the, the socioeconomic impact on, on migrants and, and other vulnerable people has been amplified um, due to the often precarious nature of the work that they're doing when, when they migrate. Um, we're also seeing that migrants are facing uh, increased discrimination and, and xenophobia um, because they are seen oftentimes uh, and, and wrongly uh, as uh, carriers of, of the virus. Um, again, oftentimes migrants are, are hosted in uh, overcrowded locations when, 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 they became, when they become stranded in, in their countries of, of destination. They have very little, if any, access to adequate uh, uh, health care. So a priority right now, again, is to, to make sure that, that, uh, that people can come back if they wish to do so. Since oh. May, uh, 165 stranded migrants uh, have uh, returned from Lebanon. We've seen the conditions and we've seen reports of, of the situation in that country for migrant workers, including um, Nigeria. Um, uh, and, and, you know, um, we've also uh, organized the, the voluntary return of, of, of a number of migrants from other countries, such as Mali and uh, Niger. Uh, and since the start of the pandemic, um, the returnees have uh, received uh, reintegration assistance from uh, your organization. Is there a follow-up on these persons to see how successful the intervention uh, from the IOM is? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I, I already mentioned, you know, that, that um, there are, um, I mean, I don't want to bore you with the technical terminology here, but there are monitoring and evaluation tools to make sure that um, even in, in, in harder to reach locations, not only in Edo State, but uh, as I mentioned, Delta, as well as Lagos, any, any location where um, returnees are receiving assistance from, from IOM, uh, we ensure that, that IOM staff can come and visit and, and assess the, the progress of, of those projects. There's different um, returnees with different needs. And of course, the reintegration assistance has to be provided tailor-made looking at those specific needs. So in some cases, you will see that returnees are able to set up businesses uh, individually. Sometimes um, returnees uh, pull together the resources uh, with, with two, three uh, uh, more people from those communities to set up collective uh, uh, business reintegration. And sometimes we also look at community-based reintegration, for instance, in Edo State, where um, just this year, the IOM, uh, together with, with the local um, authorities, opened a pineapple processing plant uh, that employs not only returnees, but also members of, of the community. So again, there's different, different types of assistance being provided, again, looking at their uh, individual needs. All right, thank you very much, George, for joining us on the news. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, George Gallindo is the Public Information Officer with the IOM here in Nigeria. Hello, hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.